Now today I want to talk about facing your giants. Uh, it's easy to talk about giants as long as they're lumbering over someone else's landscape. But when you find them at your doorstep or discover that one has invaded your home or even more dangerously come inside your head, you realize how intimidating a giant can be. They have several names, these giants of ours. Uh, there's a giant called fear. Uh, even though most of us don't want to admit it, most of us entertain fears. Whatever may be your giant, uh, let me let me tell you that I've learned over the years that giants work most effectively in valleys. When we have hit a valley, that's when the giant uh, begins to march toward us and uh, intimidates us uh, the most. There's a giant that appears in the pages of the scriptures in the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, a story you have heard since you were a child in Sunday school. We read in verse 2 of 1 Samuel 17 that Saul and his men, the men of Israel, had gathered and camped in the valley of Elah. Uh, and what makes the valley intimidating is not the landscape. It, it, is the, it is the presence of a champion. He's called that more than once in this chapter. In fact, the emphasis always falls on the externals when you deal with giants. In this case, we read that the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side and the valley between them, then a champion came out from the armies of the Philistines named Goliath. I, I, I know you know the story, I know you're familiar with where it's going, but I want to ask you for a few moments to, uh, to put yourself in that valley and to imagine looking across the way and seeing this uh, a huge, uh, imposing individual in full armor. We read that he was about nine feet, seven inches tall. He says, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, we will become your servants. And, and we read they were intimidated to the point, end of verse 11, that they gave way to dismay and fear. See it? Greatly afraid. There he is. For everyone to see, he's a he's a warrior from his earliest years, and he is he he is nobody to mess with. And Israel knew it, and all retreated to their to their tents. Now suddenly the text moves us about 10, 15 miles due east to a little hamlet named Bethlehem, and there at Bethlehem there is a family. And the father, whose name is Jesse, says to this young man, David, uh, I, I want you to take this to those who are in battle. And he gives him, gives him some supplies, some food. He sees this situation for the first time. And he hears the voice of Goliath. David, who uh, is unintimidated, fresh out of the field, he is a uh, he, he is a lover of God, and and his heart is pure. Now listen to Saul. Saul said to David, "You're not able to do it." Isn't that encouraging? He says, "You're but a youth, and and he's been a warrior from or who delivered me." Look at his eyes. His eyes are on the Lord. What a wonderful way to deal with giants. As the Lord delivered uh, me from the paw of the lion, the paw of the bear. Well, he'll deliver me from the hand of this Philistine and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his pouch. So he takes this, he takes this pouch he's got hanging from his waist and he puts these stones in his pouch. And, and, and we read, and he approached the Philistine David stands there with the stones rattling in the bag on his hip and a stick in his hand. 
And David says to him, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. Verse 49, David put his hand into the bag, took from it a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. And he brought the, he brought the head to, to, to Jerusalem. And notice in verse 54, he put the weapons in his tent, David's tent. Don't go too quickly over this wrap up of the battle. That's significant. What else is in David's tent? How about the paw of a bear? How about the mane of a lion or the tail? Just a reminder of those lion and bear moments when God wrought a victory through him. He put the weapons in his tent. All giants seem larger than they really are. You think you'll not be able to uh, get control over whatever that giant is. It, it seems larger than it really is. It's not larger than our God. It's not larger than your Savior. Never forget your own lion and bear stories. Every one of you has some. I have some. That's why I say to you, don't, don't ever forget what God has done for you. It's a little cliche, count your many blessings. You can put it that way, but think of them as God's powerful working in and through your life. Never forget your own lion and bear stories. Remember that magnificent, impossible situation that God turned around for you. Remember that prayer that you offered in a weak faith and, and by the grace of God, he answered. Following every giant victory, place a reminder in your mental trophy case. When the crucial moment arrives, Remember these five words. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. The day you take on a giant in your own flesh is a day you will face defeat. All the way through this, uh, uh, this episode, this, this brief battle, David's focus is on the Lord his God. No wonder he's called a man after God's own heart. Everybody else focused on the giant. David realized that his God was greater than any giant. There is no giant so great that he is not greater still.